much. I must first say that it's incredible to be at least in a virtual room with so many people who have been part of this STEPS journey. And it has indeed been an incredible one from 2006 through second phases, extensions, transitions, and now to legacy. And it's been an absolute honor and privilege to be involved, as Ian said, as a co-founder and co-director until 2014, when I stepped aside to direct IDS. But I also wanted to say how personally, intellectually and publicly involved I've actually remained with STEPS, often in more ways maybe than current STEPS that colleagues are aware. Um, I constantly use STEPS as a reference point in talks, in presentations and engagements around the world. And indeed, there's an awful lot of STEPS thinking in IDS's current strategy, transforming knowledge, transforming lives. So um, if I look back on this journey, um, Alison's talked about impact, interdisciplinarity and collaboration, which doesn't begin with I. I was hoping she was going to say something else I could say began with I, because I wanted to just draw attention to three P's. And all of these have been enabled really importantly by the kind of long term core funding that research centres provide. And I think this is something that's all too rare in our world of, of rapid turnover project funding. Centres are really important and I think STEP shows why that is. So my first P is people um, and collaboration then of course. Firstly, across the Sussex campus. So STEP started as a collaboration between the Institute of Development Studies and SPRU, the Science Policy Research Unit, as a really overt attempt to bring together development studies and science technology and innovation studies. And then in the latter phases, it's involved colleagues also in the School of Global Studies and more. And I think what STEPS on, in Sussex has really done is to establish um, building on some earlier strands and then intensify a really fine tradition of critically engaged environmental social science, which is in keeping with Sussex's own radical progressive values and is now so badly needed more than ever amidst the ongoing global challenges that we're all facing. And which I really hope will be a central part of the university's now wider efforts in sustainability research and practice. The STEPS legacy is gonna be really important to this. But of course, in an internationally focused center, collaboration is far more global. Um, and it was really exciting to see the project focused partnerships and networks that we established in the early years gradually morph into the Pathways to Sustainability Global Consortium, which really helped to decenter, to decolonize, to diversify our efforts with brilliant people and partnerships that united five continents with one co developed vision. And the consortium six hubs based in their leading academic institutes in Africa, South Asia, China, Europe, Latin and North America have collaborated together on some really amazing transdisciplinary research, policy engagement, impact communications and teaching, which just could not have happened in any other way. And again, there's a lasting legacy here in ongoing projects and proposals. But also people, STEPS has also, certainly to me and I hope to many others, been about informal relationships between people across the UK and across the world, often coming together and sparking not only ideas but also friendships through our summer schools, our workshops, our events in the field and all the encounters around them. And these are encounters, of course, that we've all missed in person through COVID, but sustained online. And again, I trust part of the legacy. And goodness, it's been a lot of fun too. So my second P is for pathways to sustainability. Alison's already talked about this as an impact contribution, but I think this core idea, those ideas around trajectories of change and intervention in complex systems underpinned by narratives, shaped by power, um, have also been valuable as a heuristic, a metaphor, a practice, a set of ideas and concepts. And they've inspired and guided and been further developed through so many activities from projects in and across STEPS original domains of climate and energy, health and disease, water and sanitation, agriculture and food, to cross-cutting initiatives like our 2010 new manifesto for innovation, sustainability and development to numerous others. 
And they lead to my third P, which is for power and politics. Either of those, you can choose which you want. So it's always been central to Steps' work, analyzing power, both material and in the all important politics of knowledge, challenging and calling out regressive and oppressive power relations that support unsustainable and unjust pathways, working with others to appreciate and empower alternatives, especially those that give voice and power to people and places otherwise marginalized. It's really surprising how many steps outputs have politics in their title. An early one, the politics of asbestos, to more recently, the politics of green transformations and more. Or maybe it's not surprising, because I think if we've learned anything over this journey, it's that sustainability, social justice, science are always and everywhere profoundly political. And it's been an absolute privilege to work with colleagues who get that and are committed to it and are committed to research and engagements that work with that basic insight in all kinds of ways and use it to help make the world a better place. And that aspect of the STEPS legacy is now needed more than ever. So colleagues, collaborators, it's been a privilege. It's been fascinating, it's been important, and it's been fun. An amazing journey, but really, really one that's not yet over. Even if institutionally and in terms of funding support, we can no longer look to that core funding, steps will live on in a whole set of projects, of partnerships, of people and of collaborations. So thanks to all who've been part of the journey so far and long live the step spirit and legacy into the future. Thank you.